dear friends welcome to sinpod once again in the studios today i have the sister duo ranjini and gayatri world renowned musicians whose musical contributions include studio recordings television performances radio programs concerts festivals and lecture demonstrations ranjini and gayatri gave their debut performance at the prestigious indian music group in mumbai at the age of 13 and 10 respectively ranjini and gayatri owe their rich musical heritage to their gurus shri t s krishna swami who taught them the violin and shri p s narayan swami who guides them now and they had their initial vocal training from their mother shrimati meenakshi balasubramanian and their father balasubramanian who played a pivotal role in shaping their musical values ranjini and gayatri have appeared as soloists violin duos accompanies vocal duos composers educators and ambassadors of indian classical music even as toddlers they showed an uncanny capacity to grasp the subtle nuances of carnatic music Gayatri could identify over 100 ragas when she was barely 2 and a half and Ranjini could delineate complex rhythm patterns at the age of 5. The sister duo have given many thematic concerts and have an extensive repertoire consisting of gems of the trinity old and contemporary Tamil compositions and other languages including Sanskrit, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi and Marathi. They have performed in prestigious venues and festivals like the Kennedy Center in Washington, South Bank Center in London, Ravenna Music Festival in Italy. the cross cultural festival in warsaw and poland the bengal music festival in dhaka esplanade theater in singapore and the iconic gateway of india to name a few the sister duo have won numerous awards and titles in recognition of their contribution some of them being the kalaimamani award from the government of tamil nadu the gana padmam from brahma gana sabha lifetime achievement award from bharatiya vidya bhavan sanskriti award from sanskriti pratishthan in new delhi vani kala sudhakara from sri tyaga brahma gana sabha sangeeta kala shiromani isai jyoti and the dk pattamal award sangeeta vedanta durina nada kala nidhi from shanmukhananda sangeeta sabha isai peroli the national eminence award from shanmukhananda fine arts and the kalki krishnamurthy memorial award please join me in welcoming the extremely talented ranjini gayatri to our studios hello friends welcome to zenpod once again I have today the divas of Carnatic music, as I call them, on stage, on in the studio. They are everywhere. So I'm talking about yes, none other than Ranjini Gayatri. Welcome to Zenpod, and thank you for agreeing to come. Namaskaram, Minky. Uh, thank you for inviting us uh, uh, for this uh, podcast. It's really a pleasure uh, talking with you and sharing our experience. Thank you. Namaste, and this is Gayatri. Happy to be here. Thank you, uh, thank you, both of you. My my trademark question: In your context of life and music, that's that occupies a large part of your life. How do you view spirituality? We have not consciously thought uh, uh, of spirituality as such, but uh, I think uh, in Carnatic music, spirituality is very much the backdrop of all uh, compositions, lyric wise. uh you it's a coincidence maybe that many composers of carnatic music are uh, saint composers so the content the meaning of the lyrics are very very uh, philosophical has a very high spiritual content uh so it is one of the layers of carnatic music so if a person would like to connect with that layer he is it, it is great uh, but uh, music and it need not necessarily intersect uh, uh, spirituality because they are uh, different paths and and if you were to have <laughs> out a definition for spirituality what would you say i don't think uh, we are uh, in a stage of development that we can come up with definitions for spirituality okay. at best we can describe our experience of such moments in our okay. lives okay. and i i think i would say that every profound experience that i have had Every elevating experience that I've had has been always one where I have been singing or that I have been listening to music. Wow. So music to me is has always been uh, the the bridge or the medium through which uh, I have experienced uh, transcendental, profound moments. Brilliant. So blissful moments, I could say. By bliss, I don't mean you know the normal vicissitudes of happiness and sadness that we go through on a daily basis, but a certain um, awareness mm-hmm. a certain uh, uh, i can only put it a way that when you feel elevated above your narrow self and such moments have been only possible through music so i am very grateful for that oh brilliant uh, let's not talk talk about the evolution of ranjini gayatri into where you are tell us about it i am so curious and i am sure the listeners are 
Well, we are very fortunate uh, to be born into a family uh, who were very passionate about music. So our journey in music, or uh, it started very early, and we were very fortunate to uh, to be born to parents who identified our talents very early. So we have also the Pashumaratha Ani Pola Abimba. That means when you work at that tender age, everything goes into you, into your it it goes into you so viscerally. and the learning also happens very fast so uh, un- unfettered uncluttered mindset when we were really learning we have put in a lot of hard work so and also go, um, you know life has given us a lot of opportunities to wear different hats or avatars first we st- um, as kids though i started learning uh, vocal from my mother at the age of 5 Okay. Uh, lay, uh, I saw my father play on the violin, and just like a kid who is attracted to a new toy, maybe I also wanted to play the violin. And of course, Gayatri, who is a tad younger than me, three years, she also wanted to uh, follow suit. She also wanted to try out that instrument, and lo and behold, we started uh, wow. learning violin, wow. and very soon started performing. So our journey started as violinists, and then we also. started accompanying other uh, illustrious veterans uh, in the field of music which was also an option we should be started off as duo violinists yeah. oh, that okay. was the first uh, oh, the first of its kind come together so for no we're not first of the kind there are many violin duos but we started our career uh, our first concerts in fact the first 3 years i would say were entirely violin duets Wow. And then, as Ranjini said, we went into accompanying uh, other musicians. So we have accompanied. We have had an opportunity to accompany royals, uh, uh, illustrious people like D. K. Patamar, Dr. Oh, okay. Manmohan Singhji, wow. and many others on the violin. So this has been a great experience too. Then uh, uh, another milestone uh, where, where we started singing, thanks to our uh, guru. It's a well-known fact that our guru, uh, P. S. Narayan Swami sir, uh, he. encouraged us to take up vocal and then that happened and then after that uh, we have also donned so many uh, you know when we when you look at evolution of ranjini gayatri uh, it i would say that they were, when i stand back and take a look at my life at, at our journey for the past uh, i would say 40 years because i'm also counting the years of a uh, classroom training or a uh, formal initiation Mm-hmm. uh started mm-hmm. so it's like almost 40 years wow. yeah we are that old <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at 40 years of uh, engagement with music and like ranjini said through so many uh, changes or twists in our journey mm-hmm. change of paths sometimes uh new uh, adventures that that came upon us mm-hmm. and we were game for such adventures mm-hmm. so most of it has not been really driven by us consciously mm-hmm. it has happened all we have done is try to match up to whatever was asked of us we worked hard we were sincere we loved what we did and i think uh, the way the music and the life led on us i think it, it is it's nothing been short of magical that's what i think magical the way we walked this path beautiful i will i will come to some of those parts a little later but one of the things that i was tempted to uh, in in terms of in terms of order of questioning i said i must ask you this because i am a huge fan of this particular part of yours i don't know a better word than a fan but you are abhanks you are abhanks are in an absolutely different zone right so is there a connect between lord vithala and uh, ranjini gayatri does he visit you often do you meet him i mean i want the answer to this i need to know the answer <laughs> well all abangs are on vithala yeah so we are very much connected our, uh, yeah the our connection with abangs are very very musical as as a, i was about to say actually we also uh, became composers we started composing abangs and okay. setting tune to vithala wow so that is one more thing that we have done uh, we but uh, talking about uh, our connection with vithala uh, whenever we performed that we have heard stories about many of our fans uh, coming up to us and said because of your abhangs because i heard your abhangs i was uh, inspired to go to vithala uh, and uh, go to pandarpur and have wow. darshan of vithala many wow. people have come up to us and said and they saw they saw vithala 
uh, they, uh, they had darshan of that because of the music. But unfortunately, we had never had that opportunity till where uh, we got a, 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 a chance to uh, directly sing at the Sanctum Sanctorum. Oh, beautiful. Early oh. Year. <laughs> yeah, both of us, we sang and we also performed a concert following that. This was at Pandarpur? So, uh, we got to sing before our own Mithala. I would say, is there a connect between, see, for a musician, when you learn a song or you learn a, a new genre sometimes, it is, it's a very musical uh, pursuit. You learn the raga, you, you pay attention to the cadence of the words. You, and of course, there are some natural uh, endowments sometimes. Right. Us being born and brought up in Mumbai, um, so we were exposed to Marathi. So our diction right. and uh, the Correct. accent Correct. Uh, articulation is generally, it, it, it is much easier for us to get it right, right. than perhaps a person who has lived yeah. and grown outside yeah. of Maharashtra. Yeah. Correct. So these are a few of the natural uh, um, strengths that we had. But that apart, I think it is just that when you bring a, a good voice, a good musical sense, a lot of uh, emotional depth to your singing, it does not matter whether it is a Tamil composition or a Abhang or a Devarnama or a Telugu composition mm-hmm. or whichever language it is. As long as you pay attention to the details, I think you can do justice to it. And that is what I am concerned as a musician. Beautiful. One of your abangs has brought tears to my eyes uh, of joy. I must tell you that. Of joy or bliss. Thank you so much. No, seriously. And I, that's why I asked you this question. I couldn't resist waiting till the middle of the program. How would each of you describe the other's singing styles? Gayatri is the most consistent of performers I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, yes. I, I say that as an observer, not because she is my sister. Uh, and the most rounded musician you would say there is nothing that she cannot do. Uh, the voice, uh, what can I say? The voice, the mind, the 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 connect that she brings with, I mean, not only with herself and music, but also to the world. Uh, it is for everybody to see that brilliance. Uh, be it uh, everything, right from intellectual, in, uh, you know, intellectual music, which appeals to the mind, it ap- appeals to the intellect, or to the emotion, everywhere. I mean, she is such an all-rounded musician. I've never seen somebody who can deliver every time, every time. And whatever she can do, she will go 200%. Much more than what she can possibly do. And that I have seen uh, in close quarters. And that is something which I would definitely, or anybody would like to emulate. Wow. There you go, Gayatri. That is... Fantastic uh, testimonial, I mean, <laughs> what about you? I would say, you know, uh, to me, Ranjini, yes, she is my elder sister, but she's also played the role of a mother to me many times. So she has given me so much of unconditional love on stage, off stage. It's there all the time. But when I sing with her, uh, you know, uh, her, her voice is like the bottomless depth of an ocean. Oh. So deep, so so serene. So, you know, after the storm breaks, when the sun breaks out and you have this inexpressibly beautiful blue sky, right. the storm seems like a dream. And that's, that's the kind of feeling that Ranjini's voice, you know, it is so beautifully, it's so well suited to the idiom of Carnatic music. I would say Indian classical music, uh, the texture, the depth. Uh, and in many aspects of singing, like, for instance, when we sing a Kalpanaswara, Mm. Or when we uh, sing, uh, when you just hold a note, the depth and articulation with which she sings is something that uh, is it always adds to the feel and the depth of music. Uh, so I think that more than anything else, when I am on stage, I have somebody who who is there for me in every way. And I think it is not about just Ranjini Gatri is not merely the sum of the parts of both of us. It is something more than that. Uh, when we come together, it creates a synergy. And I think that is only possible because of Ranjini's uh, giving uh, generous attitude. Not just towards me, but to yeah. she's very nurturing 
to everyone on stage right uh, whether it is the violinist or the percussion artist uh, that that sense of uh, positivity that she exudes brings out the best from everyone around her and uh, i think that is something that uh, truly uh, helps me give my best every time i'm on stage beautiful wow it's really complimentary fantastic it's really nice to uh, hear both of you say this about each other awesome so gayatri are you a fan of ranjini absolutely <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> awesome awesome no uh, it sounds very corny to say it, no 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 know? but i know i mean we are raga we are we complete each other and we start yeah. each other yeah so to yeah. for ga to say that i'm a fan of ra and for ra to say the same of ga Not. seems like we are patting each other on the back because yeah. where do i end and where does she begin <laughs> beautiful no very nice yeah okay uh, i want to come back to uh, to you know music and spirituality and i've seen i've seen various performances of yours you have even come to dubai and performed you are amazing on stage that there's there's no denying that are there have there been concerts or have there been particular songs that you have finished singing and you said oh my god i don't know how i did that did you find a, a depth or an or an intellectual or a spiritual connect and you said oh my god both of you looked at each other and said we don't know how we did that or has it happened to you or does it come to you naturally in such moments of you know bliss something that happens those goosebumps right uh, something which is inexplicable mm-hmm. uh, you, it uh, it transcends you to some other world where you you become aware of the whole auditorium people listening to you with so much of you know silence but uh, that poignant silence right uh, yes there has been many moments like that but uh, and we of course live for it as performers we look forward to those moments yeah and we don't know when that really happens it can happen anywhere you are singing mano dharma sangeetam or a composition or anywhere beautiful nowadays it happens very often oh really yes i mean i think the point is that when you when you dissolve yourself in the music mm-hmm. and the music just happens you are not singing something uh you are also you are you are letting yourself be taken in the flow of the music and that is the most beautiful uh, feeling for a musician oh that's true no I, as uh, as audience as part of the, as part of the spectators who listen to you for us it's very obvious when we see you especially there are some you know and i've seen it happen during your abhangs uh, i have seen it happen during a couple of your other numbers i can't recollect immediately so for us it's very obvious but i am asking it because you are there doing it right so you are lost you are any which way lost you are in a different zone you are performing so which is why i wanted to, i was curious to know does it and, and interesting so you do realize it okay i want to go back to your childhood now and um, you spoke about violin you started playing violin at a very very early age when do you remember the time when the switch to singing happened was it gradual was it immediate how did uh, well uh, as uh, in carnatic music training uh, whatever instrument you take up vocal is an integral part of your training Correct. you are also asked to sing so that you, your articulation is better mm-hmm. and uh, your attention to the nuances of the lyrics also especially is there mm-hmm. your connection to the lyrics is there so uh, whether you take up flute or veena or violin or even mridangam mm-hmm. uh, you are encouraged to take up vocal Correct. also uh so we have always been singing both of us have always been singing uh, while playing but not on uh, not seriously uh then it happened that uh, uh, we went to our uh, guru shri ps narayan swami sir uh, mm-hmm. to enlarge our repertoire to learn more compositions uh, after we settled in chennai so he heard us and as soon as he heard us he said you have such good voices what made you take up an instrument because in uh, the saying goes that koral illa na viral that is if you don't have a voice then you take up an instrument so you have such good voices why did you ever take so then from there he said you have to sing uh, you have so much of potential then uh, uh, then we came to we were okay to cut the long story short we were almost shoved on stage by him and uh, then we had to acquit yeah so yeah we acquitted ourselves well there and then life took its course and there was no looking back and the first performance did it come out the way you had expected there were many initial performances 
uh, which were really good when I think back. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, our expectation from ourselves were also, it also, I think, a lot depended because we had been very successful, uh, extremely accomplished violinists for more than a decade. Mm-hmm. And we had built up a very formidable body of work and made a formidable name as a violinist. Correct. In our generation, we were regarded as the best, one of the best violinists who would go on to create a style of our own. So at that very crucial time, uh, I think expectations were a lot as instrumentalists or as violinists from both of us. Yeah. So when uh, a kind of change was not in order, nobody expected it. And uh, I think many of our contemporaries told us that, you know, you are already such you're on your way to becoming legends in the field of violin, why would you even want to change course? You should right. just, you know, go on uh, uh, in that journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, to be, to be honest, we did not start singing be- because we felt inadequate in the violin. We did not start singing for any other professional uh, reason. aspirational reasons. It was only to satisfy our guru's wish that we should sing. And, um, but of course, uh, we are the kind of people who always try to do as much justice as possible when we are given a challenge. Right. And that's how we started <clears throat> singing. But I think if you, you know, you, uh, there, there was, if there was a moment which was, I would say, a defining moment or a path changing moment, it did not happen in the first concert that we sang. I would say it happened maybe about the second year that we were singing. Okay. Uh, it, that moment happened where uh, I found the change within myself and things changed after. Wow. So uh, the question was, so the initial lack of uh, unexpected uh, lack of encouragement, if you call it, because you have been accomplished violinist. And then you go on stage and start singing. And obviously the audience is going to say, Ayo, why are they singing? I mean, they, they play the violin so well. Did, did, so obviously as, a, as an audience, I'm expecting you to play the violin. And I'm not such a big fan of your singing yet. So I give you two claps instead of four. Did that at any point of time <laughs> hurt you or did you not notice it? Strangely, actually that has never <laughs> happened to us. Yes, but it has been our fear all the time. That was our fear that that would happen, but actually it never happened. It, then we found out that it was all in your mind. That was a fear that you were uh, yeah. running away from. You know, in fact, it's, this is a very funny memory that I have. In the initial years that, you know, we had started singing, but we're not quite settled. Right. There used to come these, uh, so organizers and people who knew us were, I don't know, too eager to feature our vocal concerts because they, a lot of people in the field, a lot of organizers had a lot of faith in our talent. And uh, many of them used to say, you I mean, it was very strange because we had not really made up any name as a vocalist, but many people were waiting to feature it. And I remember that whenever somebody would feature a vocal concert, I used to feel very anxious about it. And in the last minute, find some excuse and change it into a violin concert. <laughs> I did it quite a few times. You know, until this particular... Concert happened. Yes. Yeah. This was a concert uh, in, uh, I think, 99, January, mm-hmm. uh, in Tirmala Tirupati mm-hmm. Devastana in Chennai. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that time, it was mm-hmm. non-AC auditorium. And uh, the, the, the singer who was supposed to sing uh, had cancelled it a couple of days ago uh, because of ill health. And uh, we were featured in her, st- in her stead. Uh, but... Uh, Every advert carried our name only because she had uh, she had given us uh, quite a lead time for all those changes to be made. Okay. So everybody knew it was Ranjini and Gayatri who were going to be singing. But it was unbelievable the kind of number of audience that came that day. Oh. It was just magical. Uh, you would see that in every window which was open at that time, it was not AC. Now it's an AC auditorium. People around 20 people Nodding. hanging on those windows. Every window, every door, the whole wow. the hall was jam-packed. And at that time, we, we definitely didn't expect it at all. We were not, you know, what you call the popular singers of the day. Right. Yeah, because right. we were not taking, still in the initial stages of getting settled as vocalists, and we just thought it was a lark. You know, we just, for the heck of it, you sing a concert. And that day, with, with all this crowd, and maybe the grace of Lord Balaji, yeah. I, I felt that change inside me. 
I for sure I remember that and I sang like I don't know it was very strange feeling really <laughs> many people came up to us and said what happened to you what happened wow. you you are like you're going to be like rockets if yeah, if violinists <laughs> like you are going to put the singers to shame then what do we do i remember one listener saying this and uh, my mother as we were after the concert we were leaving home she turned at me and said what happened to you what got into you today what made you sing like this wow so yes definitely there was something some divine dispensation by god that day and he he made us feel that this is my path this is my journey yes we experienced that this yeah. was our calling that was the probably what you call a eureka moment where we accepted that we have it in us to be vocalists until then we were very apologetic uh, about ourselves as singers and that was a defining moment where with faith with joy we stepped on we undertook this new avatar <laughs> brilliant you are you are both so articulate uh, with, with obviously obviously with the way you sing but now in the last 20 25 minutes clearly the way you speak as well uh, i i have a question for both of you music and mind what's your take well for carnatic music for sure mind is very very important it's very vital because you have to be there 100% uh, there was a scientist who uh, a friend of ours a fan of ours who came up to us and said that actually carnatic music he has done certain experiment okay. uh, and he said that carnatic music actually recharges maximum or uh, um actually maximum parts of the brain is uh, is uh, is ignited or is used when you sing carnatic music wow. because uh, because there are so many components there are so many um, faculties that have to work in conjunction you know in conjunction with each other when whether it's our active memory the imaginative side the intellectual side the sense synchronization motor skills there are so many aspects which has to function in coordination with each other simultaneously so i would say it's a great brain workout and also you know the only component which is not related to the mind if you can separate it out is your voice because the voice is a hardware Correct. you are endowed with your voice yes. but even there using your voice in a particular way making it do what you want singing in tune getting your swaras gamakas right all yes. this is a function of the mind so when mind and voice comes together that is when great music is coming. where do you draw your en- energy from <laughs> from the sun <laughs> and then from the star who is next to me here <laughs> she is talking about ranjini so <laughs> Wow. Awesome. Awesome. That star up there and this star next to me. Yeah, <laughs> she, she stole my line. <laughs> no, awesome. No, seriously, is there is there something you do or is there something specific you draw your energy from? Yes. And it's awesome by the way. I'm I'm not even I'm just asking in a very positive light. I think it no it's a great question. Uh I think some part of it is just that we are uh, what do you, if I may use a cuss word we are damned lucky. <laughs> we are too lucky because we are surrounded nurtured by the most loving and great people great human beings mm-hmm. uh, ranjini's family ranjini's mm-hmm. husband my brother in law her mother in law who who was with us until very recently i'm sorry to hear uh, my mother in law uh, my parents of course of course then our immediate my our respective husbands you cannot meet such great souls i mean even if they are not related to me i would say that they're such positive joyous giving generous kind hearted people Beautiful. and being touched by them is itself a blessing and to be blessed with music and to spend our life learning from such people around us i think we're just triply blessed and that and if we are able to reflect some part of this goodness that we are exposed to by you know our family members mm-hmm. i think that in itself is such an energy giving mm-hmm. presence in our life very very well said yeah mm-hmm. i will i will take the lucky bit for the family part of it but the other parts is your hard work and perseverance <laughs> and 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 sweat so uh, so uh, thank you so much anna thank seriously uh, who inspires you ranjini Uh, inspiration of course gayatri's uh, you know meticulousness wow. and her uh, yeah her pursuit for perfect uh, you know perfection 
uh, her desire for perfection it's a, it's a tall order so every time i i play catch up, catch up you know uh, so uh, you can't be without her influence but of course if you talk, talk about uh, who have inspired me i think of great uh, musicians like uh, dk patamal who was uh, the first one the first brahmin lady to ascend the stage so much of uh, you know uh, uh, challenges she must have faced to be able to walk that path Absolutely. and to stay say true to that path and so much of courage and uh, sacrifices that she had to make at that time to make it possible to share her music with the world but she did it on yeah awesome lady awesome. and many women like that she's divine and you guys three now that i find i mean don't we do take inspiration from great musicians from great trend setters who have come before us and made it easier for us to to climb the heights uh, i would also say that as you grow as a musician inspiration is all around you any random piece of music you hear even if it's a child who is singing there is always something to learn there's always something to uh, it will trigger something, trigger something. Nice. so uh, inspiration is all around you music is all around you you need to develop the antenna and the proper uh, you know signals to tune in and be enriched by this by this very nice so 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 that would be your inspiration uh, gayatri yeah i've had my inspirations too uh, my inspiration when i was young i was a violinist with sen rajam she still continues to be a huge idol for me and there are many musicians but then there are always some who are extra special and i would yeah. say she is for sure awesome. <laughs> very nice very nice your your mutual love and admiration is so is so infectious it's so nice it's so nice singing typically and they say this is they say this to work as well but but singing clearly is a reflection of uh, who you are what you are blah 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 so for <laughs> my two two parts of the question one is is there are you both very very similar and alike number one and is there something you do to be on the same wavelength to be and to be special or is that the way you are born manufactured yeah yeah the the, the later is absolutely right we are manufactured <laughs> this way <laughs> and we also had the opportunity to know each other since birth so that is a great head start to have you mm-hmm. know that complete trust in each other uh, that uh, i know for sure that gayatri will uh, you know hold it for me when i uh, need it Mm-hmm. and i would do the same back. for her yeah i have on the back sorry so uh, that is there so do you have to be the same do you have to be the same yeah. but yeah we are two personalities of course oh. uh, yes uh, gayatri is much more as i said a fire brand mm. <laughs> yeah. i would say if you want it symbols then i think i am the fire and she is mother earth <laughs> <laughs> well so sir i will not do so very well No, but we are very contrasting personalities. Oh, is I it? We balance it out. But yeah, we share a lot of common grounds. Same common values. Of course, upbringing, same upbringing helps. And, and, and the reason I'll tell you. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. The reason I also ask this question is because I've spoken to a couple of accomplished musicians like you, and you know, typically the answer I get is, you you do tend to prepare for a concert or for a show, and and obviously you you want to be. you want to be at your bed so you don't want something if you have a show at 10 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon you don't want your day to be affected by external unintended circumstances or you know you want to be in a good zone when you go to perform and which is why i asked you for one person it's, it's probably easy but it makes it two of you and especially when two of you come together on stage which is why my curiosity about how do you manage to do you speak to each other how do you manage to retain let's say today ranjini has had a bad day i, I I'm, i'm sure you've not but let's say we had a bad day and both of you are performing would you then try to bring her on the same thing or does she not tell you about it or how does it happen well uh, i would say that I, that's what i said right in the beginning that i've never seen a bad day in life brilliant i've never literally never uh, uh, yes but that is because not that she didn't have a bad day it's because on stage while she sings all that she overcomes with just one wow. swoop she will be there she is zoom you know right there bang on okay she has that's why i said she always gives a 200% and music maybe it that is the best connector for her but she is transported to another zone when she starts singing and wow. it is palpable for everybody i have known uh, you know there has been instances where her you know she was not well 
physically she was not well to be able to sing a concert we have we were traveling and then i had to literally pull her up and uh, you know ask her to get ready and you know so uh, and i used to be so worried that this concert should go well and then lo like magic one the minute she started singing all her i mean inda konnukku edana irundha iniki appingra maadhiri da she would be all the way very nice so that's something that is a grace god's grace that yeah. comes absolutely uh, yeah of course we all have our good days and bad right. days right uh, i definitely have a day too uh, as i said i never had a i've never seen her have a bad day but i do no no and she would give me a frown <laughs> she would glare <laughs> we are brutally one thing is that we don't sugar coat anything we are very honest yes. with each other we uh, we openly fight we argue we rave and rant but uh, we are completely transparent to each other awesome so uh, awesome. that is for so that honesty is there within us but i think for for any to for any group of artists to to come together on stage uh, Uh, you know in a very effective way i think right. a very good uh, cordial warm uh, relationship between them is very I very important absolutely and of course goes without saying between the both of us uh, if it's a petty argument it's all forgotten but any serious uh, conflicts definitely need to be resolved before you go and start singing because it will reflect on the right right i awesome. think that's very important thank you thank you for the candid answer really 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 you improvise a lot singing and this i'm not talking only abangs i've seen even your other places where i have heard the pristine pure what i call the classical school music and if you hear the same number both of you singing there is a twist or there is a turn somewhere and very very artistically done how do you manage the fine balance between you know the classic the classical pure music and and the improvisation it's a wonderful question one is not antithetical to the other Oh. Uh, it is like you trying to yeah it is like a language right music is like a language mm-hmm. and uh, imagine you want to be articulate in a, in a particular language you learn uh, the the syntax the grammar uh, the how to may uh, build word you know the fu- the fundamental blocks right. foundation blocks of right. um, music you learn just like you learn a language and then when you become masters whatever you do you you will of course be grammatically correct right will uh, will you put an is instead of are such things are not going to happen yeah. so uh, you become uh, grammar is such an inherent part of you you don't think about it as grammar it is not a conscious uh, effort at all it is a backdrop it is it has become a part of you now you rise above all that to express your thought and communicate what you feel your expression and that's what happens beautiful in music too interesting i think the quality of balance is very important in music uh, like we talk about the balancing what you say is a traditional pure music i don't know pure is the word i would use because mm-hmm. no music is pure tradition mm-hmm. is always an ever flowing stream and uh, it goes on uh, assuming different colors and shades as different right. composers and music right. add their might right. to it right. Right. so uh, but what is done and what you do right now uh, i think a good way of balance is to always never overdo anything what you do that has been something that always it's a conscious striving for that that don't overdo whatever you do as a musician try to do it with a sense of proportion and a sense of control I think this is a good advice for I would say any musician. I think this will happen automatically if it is not an expression of ego or yourself. Uh, I am doing it. I am singing this. I am this self. The the sense of self should dissolve mm-hmm. into the greater music. And when that spirit of uh, you know just wanting to merge with the great music, which is far higher than you. you are attempt mm-hmm. to connect with that everything else will fall in place and your music will be pristine wow you you say it so you say it so easily and so simply and here i'm sitting and and, and i've been a part of the audience like i told you several times and i'm saying <laughs> that's not as simple as it sounds <laughs> but yeah but i agree with you i i completely agree with what you're saying i want to as we are drawing to the close of our discussion i want to do a rapid fire with both of you uh, you can you can choose to have you can choose to have different answers So you can choose to have different answers, and we'll go Ranjini first, and then Gayatri or whatever. Or if the answer is the same, it's fine. So 
Okay, ready to go? Okay, so my first thing is music is my life. Yeah. My heart. Wow. Raga is Rantini Gayatri. Wow. I must confess, I never expected this answer. This is a sixer. <laughs> this is an absolute knockout. It's a home run. Alapana is imagination unfettered. Ranjini? It is like a free, free flowing, the most difficult expression, form of expression. Oh, okay. Karnatic music is? It is the best. <laughs> I don't know. There are so many things I can say to describe Karnatic music. It's complexity, the profundity, the depth, yeah. the feel. Yeah. It is just the most complete music. A singer is? <laughs> the person who connects uh, with Carnatic music the most. I mean, she's a, an artist who will connect with, uh, who will take Carnatic music to the audience the best. Gayatri? No, we need that. <laughs> that is total uh, rubbish. <laughs> See, we are very bad with the uh, caption one line. No, 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 but even then. No, no, I would say that Carnatic music, what I was trying to say was that yeah. a, a singer does the best justice to Carnatic true, music. True, true. Ranjini is? Yeah. <laughs> but this guy three, you can't answer. You can't answer this. So Ranjini is a ra, the sun. <laughs> and guy three is ga, the guy key. So when sun meets guy key, you get raga. Come on, Ranjini, you can't let her answer this. You have to. <laughs> oh, what, my goodness, you are really. Uh, Gayatri is. I'm going to ask you, Gayatri, and come back to you, Ranjini. But. Gayatri goes gaga over Ra. <laughs> but. No, but if you were to, Gayatri, if you were to describe one quality to describe you completely, what would you say that is? Me? Yeah. I would say I'm the most transparent person. That is one quality in me. Wow, great. Yeah. And Ranjini, you? What would you say? Uh, Gayatri is. Uh, Pursuit of perfection and giving her 100% every time. Yeah, very nice. Ranjini Gayatri would like to be remembered as 50, 100 years from now, let us say. Something who, uh, someone who touched people's hearts. Yeah. There are many, uh, we are actually part of many people's unforgettable moments and we are very grateful for that. Awesome. And that's how we would like to be remembered too. Awesome. Before we close, my, my last question, and this is probably a, a very important and a serious question. What is, uh, and for from both of you, what is your message for aspiring musicians out there? You know, whether they be sisters like you, whether they be the father and son, whether they be brothers, whether they be individual singers, you've gone through the, you've gone through the journey. What would your message be? I would say uh, that music as a profession is a very difficult and tough uh, path to uh, lead on. And... Uh, uh, this has to be, of course, uh, a journey of passion rather than a professional uh, course. Um, because the, the end result, if your aspirations are in terms of how much audience you will get or, uh, you know, external things like uh, how much money, uh, fame, or how many people will listen to you, all that, then you will, you're, up, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. If you're... Uh, your desire is only to connect with music uh, deeply and to be able to express through music, then you will be always happy. Very nice. So Very yes, nice. think for yourself because that part will always assure you when you commit yourself to sadhana, there's one word which is often used in the world of Indian classical music, which is sadhana. It is discipline, it is immersion, but it is more than that. It is practice, it's everything. It is to commit yourself to a lifetime journey into music. And that is sadhana. So sadhana is always inward looking. It is never ex external. So as long as the students or the singer or the musician's mind is inward turned, I think a good part of their happiness will be fed by the music itself. And everything else is a bonus. If it happens, great. If it doesn't, you still have this with you. So that is, uh, and that has worked for us. And we were also lucky to have other, the other aspects of, you know, professional success or whatever. But there is no question that the primary happiness of our music is that it makes us happy when we sing. And I think that is the most joyful aspect of, of my uh, vocation for me. Very beautiful. On that, on that really inspiring and lovely note, uh, I want to thank both of you, Ranjini and Gayatri, for agreeing to come on the studios. I know you're busy. I know you have a lot of things. I, I invite you today and you, you both of you very graciously agreed to come on the show. 
I really want to thank you both and uh, and I look forward to meeting you in person flesh and blood sometime very soon. Also, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, dear Vinky. Your questions were really insightful. Yes. Thank you for, uh, uh, for giving us this opportunity even to think and to articulate these thoughts. Thank you. <laughs>